Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day and staying safe. Today in cryptocurrency news, we're going to talk about China's digital coin is more explosive than... This could be a very interesting topic because right now the United States seems to be ignoring China's digital coin that's coming out of their central bank and could that be a big problem. Bitcoin's future, is it in the green or in the red? And finally, CoinZoom is a new digital exchange launched out of Utah in the United States. So let's get into it. Crypto investing ideas that'll help you take profits and avoid losses. That's what our channel is all about. Can we get 99 likes on this video? Hit that like button, smash it right now. It helps the channel grow and helps YouTube actually promote the video. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So, China's digital yuan is an economic cyber weapon and the U.S. is disarming. So, so this could be a really big deal. And until I started digging into this a little bit deeper, I had no idea how big of a deal it really might be. And unfortunately, at, the to at this moment, it appears as if uh, United States lawmakers and those that are in charge are completely uncognizant of it in, in, in its entirety. So I'm going to dig into this a little bit deeper than I normally would. But there's more than what I'm going to talk about available out there. I'm going to leave you a link to this article in the description um, on the YouTube channel. And so if this strikes any kind of a chord for you, I strongly recommend that you read the rest of the article from the beginning to the end. So let's get into it. Regulators and lawmakers worry that a digital currency from Facebook will compete with established national currencies. If you haven't heard about it, Facebook about nine months ago announced that they were building a digital coin called the Libra coin. And nine months ago from today, today is uh, March 19th, 2020. It was sometime around the June-July time frame of 2019 that Facebook announced its Libra coin. So... They res they've responded, they being the regulators, responded by seeking legislation to quash innovation uh, with regulation banning big tech companies from finance. In fact, there were several new laws announced in the United States that would prevent Facebook from creating a digital coin. Um, now, those laws have not actually been passed, but you know, the, the, they were very swift to respond to Facebook, bringing in Mark Zuckerberg into the United States Congress to testify about the Libra cryptocurrency. The prospect of a weaponized Chinese digital currency is a serious channel, a challenge to the national security, and the U.S. needs to harness and embrace the power of big tech to meet and defeat it. Now, when I first read that sentence, I didn't understand the real impact. So bear with me and, and find out, you know, what I needed to do was learn more about how technology is currently being used in China in the area of finance and how that uh, compares to the United States. I mean, in the U.S., we think of Amazon and uh what I didn't realize is that China has a much larger version of Amazon. So let's get into it. On the other side of the world, China is racing in the opposite direction, ironically also spurred by Facebook's looming Libra coin. In the midst of an economic cold war with the U.S., China is developing a potent strategic cyber weapon, the digital yuan aimed at the U.S. dollar and its global economic dominance. Vast populations do not have access to banking. Indonesia, for example, has one of the world's largest populations and more cell phones than people. But more than 60% do not own a bank account. 
So that was quite surprising. 60% of the people that live in Indonesia, and yet it has one of the world's largest populations, 60% do not have a bank account. They're not alone, according to the World Bank. 1.7 billion adults globally use cash because they don't have bank accounts. However, about two-thirds of these people, 1.1 billion, have a mobile phone which can be used to make and receive payments. In emerging markets and developing economies, mobile phones are poised to become banks. Now, several years ago, five years ago, even two years ago, I never would have thought of a mobile phone becoming a person's bank account. Uh, But with the advent of cryptocurrency and digital coins, it makes perfect sense to me today. China knows how to leverage mobile phones and financial technology to to leapfrog traditional banking. In China, mobile payments caught on like wildfire because there was no existing credit or debit card system. Alipay and WeChat Pay now handle more payments per month than PayPal transacted in 2017. Let me read that again. Alipay and WeChat handle more payments in a single month than Bitcoin transacted all year long in 2017, $451 billion. So these two organizations in China are handling $451 billion US dollars worth of payments every month. Combined, they have more than 1.7 billion active customers across China. By contrast, Apple Pay, which is installed on every iPhone, is only activated on 383 million phones. So Apple Pay doesn't even have a third of what China does with their Alipay and their WeChat Pay. Alipay and WeChat Pay are developed by Alibaba, the world's largest retailer and e-commerce company with a market cap that almost touched $600 billion before the coronavirus let out, and it still stands at over $510 billion. And Tencent, one of the world's largest social media companies and the first Asian company to surpass a $500 billion market value, together they've blended social media, e-commerce, and payments to create an advanced online commercial infrastructure that dwarfs the capabilities of U.S. big tech, Western big tech. Alibaba, for example, has created an online consumer sales engine that is more powerful than Amazon and its peers. In 2019, Alibaba's single-day sales reached more than $31 billion dollars, while U.S. Black Friday and Cyber Monday online sales totaled $7.4 billion. In other words, Alibaba did $31 billion versus the U.S.'s $7 billion and $9.4 billion on their best days, and so they did more than triple the volume in a single day compared to Amazon's best single days. More importantly, during peak 2019 single day spending, the Alibaba Alibaba engine handled 544,000 orders per second. That far outpaces Visa Global claimed capacity of 65,000 transaction messages per second. And notice the word claimed because Visa hasn't been tested that extensively at their claim of 65,000 transactions per second, while Alibaba has regularly had to handle 544,000 orders per second. So they have built a very significant technological infrastructure that can handle massive amounts of orders in a very, very quick period. And the U.S. has not caught up. Now you can see that this article goes on and on quite a bit. That's what we're going to cover out of it today, Um, but it could be quite serious for the United States. Top cryptocurrency analyst Bitcoin future warns of potential unknown of unknowns. So 
Willie Wu of Adapted Capital says he's not surprised to see the leading cryptocurrency dump along traditional markets amid widespread fear, uncertainty, and doubt about the global economy. We should also take caution. In the 10-year price history of Bitcoin, it has only existed inside of a macro bull market. We have zero data on how it behaves in a macro bear market. This is the known unknown. I wonder about the unknown unknowns. So it's interesting about his terminology. This is a known unknown. We know that it has not had to endure a bear market for a a significant uh, macro bear market. But what about the stuff that we don't know that we don't even know that we don't know it? That could be quite important. You know, one of the things that we don't know that we don't even know it is about global pandemics and how uh, a global pandemic like the one we're facing today um, could affect cryptocurrency, could affect the stock markets, could affect everything else. In fact, you know, there's been a lot of articles out there how Bitcoin is not a safe haven asset because of the way it reacted to the stock market sell-off and the crash. But Safe haven assets have typically been gold and other precious metals, and they had similar sell-offs. So you're not going to suddenly call gold no longer a safe haven asset just because its price dropped like the stock market dropped over the last couple of weeks. And so conversely, I don't think that logic can be applied to cryptocurrency. Not yet. We need more time to evaluate how it responds now that we've had that crash We'll see how things uh, re- react in the coming weeks and the coming months. And then finally, we have a new competitor for Coinbase and the other cryptocurrency exchanges, and it's called CoinZoom. The competitor becomes the first Bitcoin cryptocurrency exchange to offer Visa cards in the United States. Utah-based CoinZoom has just launched in the U.S., claiming a number of industry-first for cryptocurrency users and traders. The Global Digital Asset Exchange is deploying a similar strategy to Coinbase, currently the largest crypto exchange in the United States, by building a fiat on-ramp and easy-to-use features for both retail and institutional traders. CoinZoom is not only the first U.S. cryptocurrency exchange to provide Visa card to its customer, but also offers our industry first, like ZoomMe, CoinZoom's free peer-to-peer crypto and fiat payment system adds Crossland. ZoomMe is like Venmo, but better. Customers can send crypto and fiat for free to friends and family anywhere in the world for free. So this could be quite interesting with CoinZoom offering people the ability to send crypto or fiat uh, anywhere they want, anywhere around the world. The platform supports buying, selling, and spending Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, and other top digital currency pairs. And so uh, CoinZoom sounds like an exchange that we should definitely take a notice of and possibly even use. I hadn't heard of them before I read this article, so I can't give you a lot of information about them, at least not yet, but I do intend to learn more about them. The last thing I wanted to do, since today is one of the first days that we've seen uh, everything in green in about a week or two, I wanted to show you that. I don't always show the Bitcoin pricing from Coin360, uh, but in the last week and a half, two weeks, I've been doing it more and more just to kind of keep up to date with what's happening with the price. Right now, it is 6.45 in the morning a.m., on March 19th, 2020, and Bitcoin is sitting at $5,589. That's up by almost 9% in the last 24 hours. And as you can see, the rest of the cryptocurrency market is also in the green. Uh, Well, at least most of them. There's a couple of reds here and there, but for the vast majority of cryptocurrency, Uh, They're in the green for the day. So that's the news I have for you. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you want to talk about anything in particular? 
Or hey, do you disagree with me? Leave your polite disagreements in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you because you know what? You know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when we share our knowledge together, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So leave a comment down below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And have a fantastic day and stay safe.